Another gorgeous Southern California afternoon here at the LAFC Performance Center. And that means it's time for another edition of the Black and Gold Show right here on YouTube TV. Don't adjust your picture. No, it's not Max Bredos. He's away on the East Coast attending to some family matters. We'll tell you more about that a little later on the show. But have no fear. Yes, Rogo is here. And we've got plenty to get to this week on the Black and Gold Show. It starts with our weekly conversation with head coach Bob Bradley. A new edition of Beta Time. Stephen Betashore sits down with Mark Anthony K. Remember, Betashore played at Toronto, a little Canadian connection with bringing Mark Anthony K into the fold. And then we head to Bank of California Stadium. It was Members Appreciation Day there at the bank. You know there will be plenty of black and gold decorated throughout the home of LAFC. We also have an opportunity to get you ready for the Week 27 matchup as LAFC, for the first time ever, will take on a defending MLS Cup champ, TFC, and LAFC going head-to-head. -head. You'll be able to see it right here on YouTube TV. But we begin this week's Black and Gold Show with a conversation with LAFC General Manager John Thorrington. There's been a lot going on here with LAFC, and one place to get all the 411 is with John. John, obviously the big news surrounding the club this week was the transfer of Laurent Simon over to a club in Ligue 1 in France. Tell us kind of how that came about and maybe some of the plan heading forward without having the Belgian international. Good French, by the way. Uh, Ligue 1. Uh, yeah, obviously these decisions are never easy. I think the way we go about it with any of our players when these transfers come up, we have to think about the team and we have to think about the player. I think on the team side, it's not the primary focus, but you need to make sure that the economics are right. And that is uh, one part of the calculation. The other part is then what's it going to do for our competitiveness as a group. I think the story thus far this year that we're incredibly proud of is that we've put ourselves in a position to compete this year. So when you're weighing up the economics and our competitive this, uh, competitiveness this year, that went into it. And then also you have to look at it from the player side as best you can. And this was an opportunity for Laurent and his family. He had a, a very good offer on the table, which, you know, as a player I get, I understand. And I think this is a rare scenario where I think it was a good deal all around. I think everybody is well aware of our appreciation for what Laurent has meant to this club. He was one of our first uh, key acquisitions. He's been a part of some of the seminal moments of LAFC history. He'll remain, you know, his uh, his memory obviously um, doesn't just stop when he leaves. Sure. I think he's a part of the foundation of this club. And, uh, you know, we wish him, his wife, Diana, and, and their family nothing but the best moving forward. And I think as we looked at this, we also see it as um, with you know, recent additions of Danilo with the continued uh, progress of Walker with how Dayon has been playing with uh, Joao, Tristan, some of the flexibility we have. We, we did not feel like we were uh, compromising this year to the extent that this wasn't a deal we would make. So I think for, for all sides, it's, it's rare, but I think... Uh, we found a win-win for, for everybody. Yeah, and I, I think I think Simon felt that gratitude from the mm -hmm. club, even as far as the social media posts that mm -hmm. said, Merci, General. I mean, yeah. I, I thought that was uh, really special for him, and obviously mm -hmm. we wish him all the best. So switching gears, mm -hmm. the transfer window is about to close. Could you mm -hmm. see filling that spot, and I mean that spot with maybe another defender or another veteran player to help the rest of the regular season and what we hope is a long MLS Cup playoff run? Yeah, so I think we... As I said, I think we are absolutely confident in the competitiveness of the group we currently have. The window is closed other than players who were out of contract at the close of the window. So there's a very narrow crack mm. in our window that somebody might uh, get through. We know what's out there. We know what the options are. It's a very limited pool of players who, are, who were out of contract you know, at the first week of August. So. Um, we're evaluating options there, uh, and what I would say is that if we don't add anybody, we're absolutely comfortable, and therefore we would only add somebody if we felt like they were really going to help, uh, help uh, further our chances this year. Uh, you look at the matchup on the weekend, another first uh, for the club in the sense that they get to face off for the first time against an MLS Cup defending mm -hmm. champion in TFC. Uh, I know you'll be out there at BMO Field for the game. It's a special environment, a very unique environment mm -hmm. uh, in Major League Soccer. What do you look forward to in addition to bringing back three points? Yeah, I think it's uh, we're now in, I always love this time of the season as a player when 
every game matters. Points at the beginning of the season are worth the exact same amount of points they are True. now, but it does take on a different feel like we were just talking about with the comp roster composition as one. You know, professional sports is such that we have had a lot of continuity and we sort of got the majority of our group, but we've done a lot of business throughout this year. Now, this group by and large knows, you know, this, these are the guys we're going to battle with. And I think then you add on the significance of, the, of chasing a, as high a seat as possible in the playoffs. So every game, you know, as you head into the fall, just takes on that extra bit of, of importance. And Saturday will be no different. I'm excited. Uh, you know, Toronto's league position does not do their team justice. I think everybody sure. knows they're a very talented and dangerous group. And like with any of this, it's the seasons of first for us. And I think for us to be able to go and test ourselves in you know, a tough environment against a good team and continue to show what we're all about, I'm, I'm certainly excited for Saturday. Uh, I will say this also, a good thing that you're going right now in the beginning of September rather than maybe say an early March date or yeah. late in October when the temperatures yeah. can be very much different. Very Always true. appreciate you stopping by right. to share some of your thoughts. Uh, yes, it'll be a festive environment up there at BMO Field. Maybe one of the best in Major League Soccer, but I can tell you one that is better. Our stadium, Bank of California Stadium, which recently hosted Members Appreciation Day. Take a look. I take a lot of pride in living in the city of Los Angeles because of its diversity. I love the fact that I can go anywhere and experience a different culture other than the one I grew up in. And that's what's great about LAFC, is that it embraces all our diversity and brings us together and galvanizes the different communities of Los Angeles. For the, us to finally meet them and get a chance to talk to them, pictures, autographs, and just get a chance to meet other members is something that I think it's really beneficial for everyone. Players get to meet us, we get to meet them, and it's just been really awesome. There you go. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> it's important to be part of the LASC family because it brings everybody together. It makes me have a better relationship with my nephews. You know, they can come out here and enjoy the atmosphere, meet new people, and find out what the soccer football is all about. It's not about friends, it's more about family. Friends become your family, that's why I love this club. Thank you, much appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the season, all right? Being able to come and watch them practice, where we're not focused on chanting and cheering them on to beat another team. Now we're just here supporting just them. And it's a whole other vibe, and it's really cool to just walk around and see only our people. Thank you. Yeah, super appreciative uh, to the players and the ownership and the Bank of California for having this event. We, we're members and we feel appreciated. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And on behalf of everyone in LAFC, we say thank you. It's a two-way street. The fans support, the players coming together. That's what makes it all work. All right, coming up still on the Black and Gold Show, it's our weekly conversation with head coach Bob Bradley. And don't forget, a new edition of Beta Time is on the way. Welcome back, it's the Black and Gold Show here on YouTube TV. Time for our weekly conversation with LAFC head coach Bob Bradley. Uh, Bob, we head into kind of the final stretch of the MLS regular season. Does the approach change at all or is it pretty much the same? I, I say that given some of the changes in the team recently. Uh, overall approach is the same. Um, but as you go through the season, you, you focus in different ways. Uh, I think in this last period, we've tried to uh, raise the level of intensity and, and really understand that the games get more physical at the end and make sure that we're ready for the kind of one-on-one -on -one duels that we've come up against lately. Uh, still, to make sure our football's sharp so that even when the games are physical, we can think fast, play quickly, 
that part doesn't change. Uh, but training's been good, and uh, uh, we go into a stretch where the, the, the schedule is more regular, which obviously means uh, the opportunity for good training, which is something that, that we think uh, is important in terms of continuing to improve. A lot of firsts, obviously, in the inaugural season in Major League Soccer for LAFC, including this weekend, will be the first time squaring off against a defending MLS Cup champ in Toronto FC. What do you see in the matchup and heading up to what is usually a very hostile environment there at BMO Field? Toronto uh, has had a difficult season. So last year they won everything, and, and then quick turnaround to get ready for Champions League. Uh, heartbreaking loss and penalties to Chivas. Uh, injuries that came from uh, that competition and, and they've hardly played their best team all year long. And so they're fighting to still see if they can get in the playoffs. Uh, and, and so we go there knowing that they are uh, not going to just um, give away that title so easily. And so they're, they're fighting to get in the playoffs and see if they can defend. I know you and I often hear you say if we play our football things will take care of themselves. But if there's one thing maybe you're looking for early on from your 11 that's out there say in the opening 15 20 minutes what might that be uh, at toronto can we make the game also hard on them you know they're a team that still in home games controls play uh, they're a very good passing team they, they have a way to play from side to side so we've got to have ways to step up uh, you know everybody uh, asked me what it's going to be like to coach against michael uh, and and my main answer is that uh, a lot of, of the way they dictate play comes through him. And so we've got to have ways to uh, uh, close him down and make it difficult and not let him direct the game. That's obviously some of the things you want to do on the field against Michael in Toronto FC. So I'll take it a little bit off the field. It, it's a, it is a family affair. Is there a moratorium maybe just this week only on how much you talk football with your son? No, we'll talk football, but we won't talk about the game until uh, after it's over. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be in the hotel Saturday night with the staff going back through the game. And then really early Sunday morning, uh, instead of flying back on the first flight, um, I'm going to get to see Michael and Amanda, Luca and Quinn. My wife Lindsay's already there. And then Sunday, we can talk about the game and we can talk about upcoming games. But uh, beforehand, I think on both sides, it's getting ready for a tough game. Understandably. Uh, best of luck in the travels up there, and hopefully we're bringing three points back come Sunday morning when you make your way back to Southern California. So Michael Bradley and Coach Bob Bradley not talking so much about this, but I'll tell you two guys that certainly will talk about it, Stephen Betashore and Mark Anthony Kay in the latest edition of Beta Time. Beta, Beta Time Show. What's up, guys? We got another edition of Beta Time here, and today we got none other than Mark the Wiz. Mark, thanks for being on, dude. Thank you, Beta. I really appreciate it. So you're a Toronto native. We're gonna go right into it. Who's Kiki? You know, I think uh, a lot of girls in the world wish they were Kiki, but uh, I would have to say it's probably one of Drake's thousands of ex-girlfriends that he decided to make a song about. So uh, nothing new there. I think uh, it's just a good way to get people to be on board with the song, you know. He's gonna be coming to LA soon. Are you gonna go check him out? Yeah, that's the plan. You know, I'm hoping that uh, I can get hooked up with uh, some tickets from some nice people around me and uh, if that happens that would be great and it would just be an awesome experience to be able to see him you know he's from Toronto so just be nice to finally see him. Nice uh, speaking of celebrities I saw that you saw Triple G that was pretty cool at the bank uh, what other celebrities have you kind of ran into here? Yeah you know LA is crazy when it comes to celebrities there they're all over the place I remember uh, my first time uh, actually being out here we saw Jay Leno just kind of walking around in the mall and and he actually said hi to us, which was pretty cool. But you know, there's Magic Johnson, Will Ferrell is at our games all the time. So I feel like it's just, uh, it's common to see celebrities. So it's nothing new, you know? Nice, man. Yeah, run into a few of myself. It's pretty cool. It's like, is that? Yeah, I think that is. So uh, it's pretty cool when you do see the celebrities out there. I'm sure people are saying the same when they see you on the street. Ah. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go, obviously you're from Toronto. I played a couple years in Toronto. Uh, it's a really cool city. But what can you tell tell the fans? You know what what's so cool about the city, and what do you enjoy doing there while you're there? Yeah, you know Toronto, it's a great place. Um, very multicultural. You know, it's home to a lot of different people, and I think it's just a massive city, and the sports there are growing too. So you know, for you, you're a part of a great team, and uh, you know, it's just a great city. So yeah. 
very, very, very grateful being able to be raised and born there. And uh, yeah, I would say, you know, you're from Toronto and you played there for two years. So I want to ask you, how did it feel winning, you know, a championship? Because a lot of the teams there, they don't win. <laughs> so you were able to be on one of those teams that brought a championship home. And now we're going to Toronto and you're going to be able to get your ring. So I just wanted to know, like, how are you feeling and how was the experience? Yeah, I mean, obviously the two years there was fantastic. MLS Cup Final twice. Winning it last year was a pretty special moment for me, especially, you know, uh, eight years in MLS and being able to finally win an MLS Cup, which is probably every player's goal. So it'll be really special when we go there to, to finally get that ring and, uh, you know, celebrate with, with some of the guys. It's going to be different because we're playing against them, but uh, but in front of the fans, you know, I think it was a special moment that they really uh, enjoyed and I enjoyed my time there. So it'll be a, definitely a touching moment and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Can't think of a better way for Stephen Betashore to return to BMO Field, the place that he once called home, than heading up there with LAFC and returning back to Southern California with another win and three points. You saw Beta there with his teammate Mark Anthony K. Guess what? You'll get to catch more of Mark Anthony K this week. He'll join us as part of our broadcast team on the pre and post game coverage on YouTube TV beginning at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time as LAFC take on the defending MLS Cup champs, Toronto FC. Want to get on the watch party action? Well, head to the official watch party at La Cita in downtown Los Angeles. You can guarantee it's going to be a great time and a great place to watch LAFC battle against TFC. That's going to do it for this week's edition of the Black and Gold Show here on YouTube TV. We leave you with one final note. I mentioned our colleague Max Bredos and the passing this last week of his abuelita. Max is on the East Coast with the rest of his family. And of course, all of us at LAFC sent our thoughts and good vibes and prayers to the entire Bredos clan. And we look forward, Max, to seeing you back here in Southern California on the weekend.